Hi everyone, with the recent event that's been going on in Pokemon Sword and Shield, very increased likelihood of getting a shiny Magikarp in max raid battles, there's a lot of people that now have shiny Gyaradoses and are wondering what is the best way to use them. So I've actually done a lot of research on this. I've kind of looked at uh, this past season that just closed, what the most viable Gyaradoses were, what ones were run the most often. So I've got that information for you guys. But I also have, uh, you know, a set that might be something unexpected where you can catch your opponent off guard, which I think is really fun. And it's personally a set that I want to try using. So I have three different movesets for you guys. Um, these are all going to be very good in the current competitive. Uh, so if you're wondering how exactly you should train your Gyarados, what moves you should put on it to make it the best it can be, uh, this is going to be the guide for you. So to begin with guys, let's just take a look at Gyarados' base stats right here. Very high attack, so obviously we're going to make him a physical attacker. He actually has pretty good special defense, not such great physical defense. However, there is a build where I want to use a nature and EV spreads to make him a physical tank. His speed is decent, but not great. So those are the things to keep in mind. You know, he is a water flying type, despite uh, his appearance, he's not a dragon type. I'm going to go right to the next part because the rest that I need to explain can better be done while I'm showing you the movesets. Moveset number one is basically a Dynamax Sweeper. Um, you don't have to Dynamax Gyarados, but this build is made to have Gyarados be your Dynamaxer if he needs to be. Now, the ability is going to be Moxie, and that's the hidden ability. So if any of your Magikarps have the ability rattled, uh, when they evolve into Gyarados, they'll get the ability Moxie. If they have the ability Swift Swim, they will get Gyarados' other ability, which is Intimidate. Both are good abilities, but for this set, we, we want Moxie. Now, guys, this is probably the most popular way to run Gyarados, and it's the also the strongest and most powerful way. So if that's what you're looking for in your Gyarados, if you're looking for strength and power, this is what you want. Now, what the ability Moxie actually does is every time a Pokemon gets knocked out, Gyarados' attack increases. So, you Dynamax this, turn one, get a one-hit KO, you already have plus one attack. The Jolly Nature increases speed and decreases special attack. So, with the EV spread, um, we're going to be making Gyarados much faster. And we don't care that the special attack gets decreased because none of these moves are going to be special attack moves. They're all going to be physical attack. Um, for the EV spread, we want to maximize its attack. That's why it's so powerful. So we put 252 EVs into attack, the maximum you can do. Then we put 252 EVs into speed, which is also the max you can do. And then with those leftover EVs, we give it defense. And that gives it a base defense of a more respectable 85. For the actual moves, Waterfall, you're going to find, is a must-run move on any Gyarados set. The reason for this is, because it is a pure water type move, and Gyarados is primarily a water type, this is called a stab move, which means it gets 1.5 base power because it's the same typing as Gyarados. So every offensive Pokemon needs to have a stab move, and Waterfall is the most powerful stab move Gyarados can learn, so obviously that's why we run Waterfall. You can also Dynamax if you're using a rain team, and use Max Geyser, and that is also going to be a stab move, plus it'll set the rain for your rain team. So that's one thing to consider. Um, Dragon Dance is also a no-brainer because that increases the attack and speed even further from what it is. So if you run Gyarados with a Pokemon that knows Follow Me, you can do Follow Me on turn one, get a free Dragon Dance, see what Pokemon they Dynamax, and then based on that decide whether you want to Dynamax your Gyarados or uh, just you know attack. Now, the third move can be either Earthquake or Power Whip. There's reasons to run both. Now, you might want to run Earthquake because it can hit all the Pokemon in the field. And again, if you've got that Follow Me Togekiss next to you, Earthquake will not hit the Togekiss. So that's a great move, and it's also great for dealing with Steel types like Excadrill. However, you already have Waterfall that it also is great for dealing with Excadrill, and Earthquake cannot hit Corviknight. So even though there's a lot of moves, or a lot of Pokemon that Earthquake is really good against and has that base 100 power, you might want to consider the other move, which is Power Whip. 
Now, Power Whip is a grass type move, so this is great for dealing with things like Gastrodon and especially Wash Rotom. Power Whip is basically made to be able to destroy Wash Rotoms. And uh, our last move is going to be Bounce. Now, Bounce really is not a good move on its own. The only reason you're running Bounce is because this is a Dynamax Sweeper and because when Gyarados Dynamaxes, that bounce turns into a very, very powerful max airstream, which will boost Gyarados' speed even further, which, in addition to his moxie, is another way you can boost speed and attack without even using the Dragon Dance. Dragon Dance is then a good because you can max guards with the Dragon Dance, and otherwise you would have no max guard while you're Dynamaxed. Now, this is what I call a Utility Sweeper. Now, the reason I call it Utility is because it can deal with a lot of different Pokemon because of the, the move spread. However, it can also uh, spam Intimidate. So, by having this Pokemon in the active, uh, right when the battle starts, you'll lower your opponent's attack on both of their Pokemon. Then what you do is you switch Gyarados out. And let's say you have um, there's your opponent starts with a Pokemon that knows either a grass type move like Ferrothorn with Power Whip, another Gyarados, or maybe a Togekiss that could know Thunderbolt, you know that your Gyarados is going to get attacked turn one. So you switch out Gyarados, and if you're going to get Power Whip, you switch out into something like Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn takes no damage, then you can switch Gyarados back in. And the more times you can switch Gyarados out and then back in, the more times your opponent attack gets lowered with the ability Intimidate. So you can see why we want to run Moxie on the one that we're always trying to Dynamax, and the one that we not, aren't necessarily going to Dynamax, Intimidate can actually be better. Now you're going to see it's the same EV spread. We want to max out attack, max out speed, and put the rest in defense. Now for the nature, I still recommend Jolly because it's going to boost the speed. However, you could run Adamant, and running an Adamant nature will increase your attack and again, still decrease the special attack. So you'll be even stronger with your physical attacks. However, you know, you won't be as fast as you would be with the Jolly Nature. And in this meta, speed seems to be much more important. So, and especially because you're lowering your opponent's attacks, um, I, I think that speed would, would be what you want here. However, Adamant Nature, still totally viable, still very scary. Um, one thing I forgot to talk about in the last set, it's, I'm glad I forgot because it's the same thing in this set. The held item, guys, is going to be a Lumberry. And basically what that will do is if your, your Gyarados gets affected by a status condition, like if it gets Will-O-Wisped or um, if it gets uh, paralyzed, it'll recover from that automatically one time. So Will-O-Wisp is something that people always try to do on Gyarados. Uh, so the fact that it's holding that berry is super, super helpful. Uh, you can run other things. You can run a citrus berry to recover some health when it starts to get low. But honestly, uh, for these hyper-offensive Gyaradoses, uh, I, I think Lumberry is a preferred item. Now look at the move set. You'll see it's very similar. We're running Waterfall and Dragon Dance both again because increasing attack and speed is always good and having that stab move is good. Now for the last two moves... You remember, I was debating between Earthquake and Power Whip. Well, on this Gyarados, you can run them both, so it can be equipped to take out both, you know, Wash Rotom, Gastrodon, but also Excadrill, other Steel types. Um, now, with the secondary move, uh, or not the secondary move, with an alternate move that you can run on Gyarados is Crunch. And Crunch is a very powerful Dark type move. So if you're playing a lot and you notice a lot of situations, where you might need that dark type power, or you're running a team that you know you already have a Ferrothorn that knows Power Whip, so you don't need Gyarados to know it too. You can put Crunch on instead of one of those moves, or if you're running a team that already has someone that uses Earthquake, you can always substitute Crunch in for one of those moves uh, based on the team that you're running. That's why I highlighted those. So that's pretty much it for this Intimidate Gyarados. And remember, for an Intimidate Gyarados, you're looking for a Magikarp that has Swift Swim as its ability. For our first one, you're looking for a Rattled Magikarp to get the Moxie ability. This one is Swift Swim. Now, this third move set, guys, is kind of the coolest. Uh, it's not gonna be, you're not gonna see it a lot, but it could be very fun, and it's also very different. And this is Gyarados as a defensive tank. 
So for this build, we're gonna have it hold a Rocky helmet. And what the Rocky helmet does is anytime someone is silly enough to do a physical attack into Gyarados, um, they will take damage. Now they, they probably, if they figure out that you have the Rocky helmet, they'll stop trying to attack you. But here's the thing, similar to the other Gyarados, this one has the ability Intimidate. So we're gonna be doing a similar strategy, switching out, switching back in to lower our opponent's attack as many times as possible. And since we're switching out and switching back in, this Gyarados is a defensive tank built to take those physical hits. So we're putting 246 EVs into HP, so almost maximum HP, 252 EVs into defense. So even though Gyarados doesn't have very high defense to start with, this will make it an absolute tank. Because uh, 79 is not bad. That's you know that's almost like, it's basically 80. And then we'll put those remaining EVs into attack because that little boost of attack will still make it a very strong attacker. Now the nature is going to be impish, so you know we again are sacrificing special attack to have an even higher physical defense. So the move set, again, waterfall, you always want it. For a physical attack, you need to have that waterfall. But the other moves are interesting, guys. So taunt and thunder wave. Taunt is great because if you see uh, you know, a team where there's clearly a setup Pokemon, like it's a trick room setter um, and there's no NDD next to it, or um, it's a Whimsicott, you just taunt it. And then they can't use any of those setup moves, uh, except for Whimsicott can still use beat up, so you have to be careful about that. But any other setup moves, like if a Whimsicott's going for fake tears or tailwind, uh, you're, it's gonna cancel it out. Um, now keep in mind though, Gyarados is speed, Whimsicott is prankster, so if it's going turn one, Whimsicott will get off a move, tailwind, whatever. But then turn two, uh, it will no longer be able to do any more setup moves. Um, Thunder Wave, this is obviously good because you can paralyze uh, opponents. So in addition to continuing to lower their attack, paralyzing them, it's really, really good. And then um, before I get to the last move, this EV set, guys, since it's so strong, it can t it's built to take hits. So let's say you start out and you have a Pokemon, you have like Arcanine out there, and you know your opponent's going to do a huge water type move on it because it has they have a water Pokemon. You switch into Gyarados, Gyarados takes, in, takes the hit. If it's physical, it literally does nothing because its defense is so high. If it's special, it still probably does nothing if it's water. And then Gyarados' special defense is already base 100, so it's still gonna do not that much damage. You get the Intimidate off, and then you'll switch Gyarados out again, or you'll taunt a Pokemon that's you know using moves to help set up, or you'll paralyze a Pokemon, and then you'll switch in and out. So that's why Gyarados is great. And then if you see an AZKO, if you hit something and it's Focus Sash, you need to just kill it. Um, you can do an Earthquake, it'll hit both Pokemon. And then the other option that I'm, I'm throwing on this one is Ice Fang, because this is good for Dragon types like Dragapult. Um, so Ice Fang can, can do some really heavy damage there. Um, and again, it's something your opponents won't be expecting. Again, this move, guys, depends on what kind of team you're having. So I included Ice Fang because if you're running a team that already has a really strong Earthquake user, um, or more than one, you might not want another Earthquake user. Or if you're running a team that doesn't have a lot of Pokemon that get missed by Earthquake, so it doesn't have a lot of um, Levitate, you know, like a Rotom with Levitate or Bird Pokemon or Togekiss, uh, you might not want to run Earthquake either because it's not going to be, it's going to hit your Pokemon too. So Ice Fang is a great alternative here. Again, you can always go Power Whip and Crunch too, depending on what kind of team you're running. But yeah, so guys, those are the three different ways uh, I would choose to run Gyarados. Um, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Definitely like and subscribe uh, if you haven't already. And I hope everyone has a great day. And I guess we'll see a lot of uh, shiny Gyaradoses in the competitive battles this season and in the raids. All right, bye guys.